Hey guys, welcome back to Critical African Thinkers. So today I want to react to John McWhorter's critique of Jordan Peterson. See, John McWhorter and Glenn Larry are two of my favorite public intellectuals, and for the most part, they're right, and I agree with them. But in this regard, I disagree with John McWhorter's criticism of Jordan Peterson. So apparently, uh, John McWhorter was present in a lecture given by Jordan Peterson, and he asked him a question and he wasn't sort of satisfied with his answer. Now that question in itself was a good question but I was I was a bit taken aback by the fact that John McWhorter was being a bit disingenuous with his reaction to the answers given by Jordan Peterson and then afterwards he went to the Glen Show and he sort of talked smack about uh, Jordan Peterson in, in that podcast. So we're going to go right into uh, the reactions that John and Glenn had about that particular question before we're going to consider the question in itself and how Jordan Peterson answered that question. So let's get into it. People in general are not fools. I think that more and more it's that they've been instructed in maybe two or three basic tenets which fall apart if you actually examine them. And I think that's a lot of the whole Jordan Peterson phenomenon, that he is teaching a certain kind of mostly fanboy to think for themselves. And yeah, he's kind of sinister. And I had a little encounter with him at Aspen. Where I'm sorry, I... John, you were... Jordan Peterson is kind of sinister. Wherever did John get that idea from that Jordan Peterson is, is sinister? I mean, you could describe him in so many ways. I do find him to be a bit intense at times, but sinister? I don't think so. You were splendid, I, yeah. John. You asked him, how does he know? How does he know? I, I know. I want people to understand what you did in that, and you can elaborate. You asked him, you said, uh, uh, some of the people who come before us and insist on being called uh, by a pronoun other than he or she want to be called they or whatever are mm-hmm. genuinely in pain and need to be recognized in their pain and mm-hmm. should be accommodated out of basic human decency and others are playing a card they're manipulative they're, they're simply seizing the moment to be able to force you to do a certain thing how do you know which or which you're a psychologist you claim to have a scientific basis for the things that you do tell us how you know damn good question john <laughs> I, had, I was enjoying myself. That really only happened. I was one of many people in the audience, and Corby Cummer, the Atlantic writer, we were sitting together, and he got me the microphone because I was saying to him, This guy needs to be asked a real question. I didn't know that it was going to be me. and that I... That's a bit condescending to the people who asked Jordan Peterson a question on that day. So, of all the people that asked him a question, nobody asked him a real question. And the responsibility had to fall on you to ask him a real question. I was going to do that. But yeah, I just wanted to know, how do you know? I would be interested to know, how can you tell whether a person like that is sincere or not? Because he could claim that his psychological training gave him techniques to know. That sounded interesting to me. Yes, a little bit of me suspected that he had no such technique, but I was thinking if there is one, I wouldn't mind. You know, I'm in the same environment, and I now and then I get the feeling that some of these students are trying on an identity or you know, trying to shock the board's law. How can you tell? Because my general policy is just to accept all of them and give them what they want, because why not? And I can't see into their brains. I wanted to know. And if everybody gets caught up, it's kind of like getting caught up in Starbucks as opposed to the general phenomenon. Everybody's caught up in the fact that technically he's saying he will not follow a law to the effect that he has to use pronouns like this. Now, if you're a legal scholar, et cetera, I suppose that's interesting, but that's not what I asked them in. Right. Uh, and he, he tried to talk about that, and I kept trying to hold his feet to the fire. How can you tell? And he didn't give an answer, which surprised me because... I thought he would be prepared to give a real answer. You get the feeling that he's used to basically saying the same 12 or 13 things over and over. He could have given a better answer, and he didn't. So, um, one of the things I noticed about John is that at times he gets too nuanced for his own good. I mean, it's good to be nuanced because I actually like it when he's nuanced in his conversations with Glenn Lauer because he sort of brings some balance to the conversation. He makes it much more center and much, much more balanced and centrist. But at times he gets too nuanced for his own good and I think this is one of the situations in which John himself gets too nuanced for his own good. So, uh, well, we're going to get into the video now and see exactly the question that John asked um, Jordan Peterson and see how he answered that question. Professor Peterson. Oh. I have. Hi, Barry. Hi. It's so good to see you up there. You too. I teach students. I teach trans students. And I'm asked often to call people singularly they. It started probably about four years ago. It struck me as very odd. I'm 52. 
And some of them, you can tell that it's coming from a very deep place, and that's how they feel, and they deeply need to be called they. Some of them, my horse sense says that they're kind of enjoying giving me a certain shock, and that there's a certain theatrical aspect. It's my horse sense that there's a certain a pâté la bourgeois aspect to it. I kind of feel it, and I'm probably right. But I can't know. I'm a linguist, I'm a person, and my general feeling has been, whatever they ask, just go with it, and let's change our usage of the pronouns, because we have a lot to do. Now, what you said was interesting. You said that the way that you make the difference in deciding these cases is based on the fact that you have psychological training and you can tell. What I want to know is, for my own elucidation and also because I think many of us wondered but then it kind of went by, how do you know? I want to know specifically because I'm a linguist, you have psychological training. How would you know? Well, and if first, you hear, a, I'm yeah. almost done. Oh yeah. No if problem. you hear a tiny bit of skepticism, in my voice, you're correct. Mm. However, I am open to being convinced. Mm. Based on your training, which yeah. is immense, how would you know which students to discount as opposed to which ones to go along with? Okay. Well, first of all, I... Now, uh, I would admit that the question is a very good question. If Jordan had made the claim that he had some psychological insight into knowing who was lying or who was not lying, I think it's a very reasonable and fair question to ask that. How would you know? Okay. Well, first of all, I wouldn't know. So, there you go, right off the bat, he, he answered the question and says, he wouldn't know, an emphatic no that he wouldn't know. Okay, let's see how he tries to explain that further. Which is part, partly why your skepticism is justified. But I have to be responsible for what I say based on my willingness to take responsibility for my judgment. So I would be willing to do that despite the fact that I might be wrong. But having said that, in, in any reasonable situation, I would err on the side of addressing the person in the manner that they requested to be addressed. Ad addressed. Okay, now, that, that answer makes sense to me. You understand? And he has said that he would err in the in the direction of you know actually addressing the people in the manner in which they want to be addressed even if he did know even if he suspected that they were lying they were not being honest in in their gender representations he just admitted just as john had said that well he had this, he would have similar feelings but he would go ahead to call them the gender pronouns with which they themselves wanted to be called it's the same thing jordan is saying here that even though he suspects that some of these people are not being genuine with their gender pronouns, he would go ahead to call them that. But that's not the issue for me. The issue is now I'm compelled by law to do so. It's like, no, not doing it, not now, because it's compelled by law. So the point that Jordan is trying to make here is that it is not about calling people the preferred gender pronouns that's the issue. It's the fact that the government has to come in and tell you that you have to do it. I mean, common courtesy uh, would require that if someone wants you to address them in a certain way, that you address them in that way. And Jordan Peterson is very, very much willing to do that to anybody. If they want to be called they, I believe he is willing to do that. If they want to be called he or she or whatever other pronouns they want to be called, I believe he's willing to do that. But when the government steps in and compels him that he has to do it on pain of punishment, on pain of legal punishment, then he says no, he's not going to allow the government to compel his speech. I think that's a perfectly reasonable answer to the question of how would you know? He said he wouldn't know even though he would suspect that. Even though he suspects, he's still going to oblige them despite the fact that he suspects that this is what they're doing. But when the government steps in, that becomes an issue for him. So that's the end of the game as far as I'm concerned. So because there is no excuse for compelling it by law, that's my, my position. And I think, I think there's all sorts of reasons for that. I don't think it was an isolated legislative move. I think it's part and parcel of a whole sequence of legislative moves that have been made and that continue to be made in Canada. I think it's an attempt by a certain radical ideological what would you say, a certain radical ideology to gain the linguistic upper hand, which I think is a terrible thing to do, to allow. So I had lots of reasons for rejecting the legislation, but it had nothing to do with it. That's very interesting. We're talking about expertise here, and my ears pricked up when you talked about how 
there is a way of thinking that would allow us to decide. I know some no, of there's my a way students. of thinking that would allow me to decide for me. No, us to decide for us. Surely you have a larger... Mi uh, oh, uh, John, it's as if John is asking, he's looking for a very, very specific answer. He knows that Jordan Peterson is not going to be able to provide, yet insists on having that answer because jo oh, Jordan is saying, okay, there is a certain technique that will allow me to decide he was the one who made the statement in the first place and if he was wrong in his statement he's correcting it now but john is just obstinate and he's saying he's rephrasing and saying no you said there was a certain technique that we can use to decide but the person who said that statement in the first place is telling you that what i actually meant was that there is a technique that i can use to decide so why are you being obstinate about this than just what's going on in your own head, and I mean that. No, I had a perfectly straightforward mission, which was there's no damn way I was going to say those words when I was compelled to by law. But that was my wanna, mission. You weren't trying to model for the rest of us a way of thinking it was really only about you? No, well, it was about me and the law. I thought the law, the lawmakers had gone too far. They'd stepped out of their appropriate territory into the domain of linguistic freedom. And as far as I was concerned, I was going to put up with that. And so if people were happy about that and wanted to follow the example, well, that was fine with them. But for me, it was something, and that, that was the statement. I'm not doing this. And then if people can draw their own conclusions from that, maybe they want to do it. I mean, and I've spoken with no shortage of trans people, and, you know, my proclivity has been without exception so far to address them in the manner that seems most socially appropriate under the circumstances. Now, you asked, I mean, you know, you asked a specific question, which was, do I have special expertise that I might share with, with other people? you're doing Martin Luther, and I think that these issues are a little subtler than those. And so... Well, what makes, you, what makes you think that you're doing the kids that are grandstanding any favors by going along with their manipulation? Because I can't decide which ones those are. Well, I just then, have my gut instincts, well, and that's not well, good enough. Look, fair enough. But you have a type 1 and type 2 error problem. So one error is that you don't call students what they deserve to be called. That's one error. And the other error is that you you call students what they want to be called even though they don't deserve it. And so what you're trying to do, optimally, is to minimize both those errors. And to do that, you have to take a middle route. Now, what you've decided to do, and I'm not criticizing it, is you've decided to allow for the possibility 100% of one of those errors because you think it's a less significant error. And, you know, you might be right. But it's not like you're acting in an error-free manner. You've just decided to minimize one form of error at the expense of the other. Because I would say you're allowing, uh, what would you call it, attention-seeking and somewhat narcissistic undergraduates to gain the upper hand over you in your class. Now, and, and that's, and, believe me, it's not isn't a criticism. It, it's not a criticism. I understand why no, you're but doing isn't, it. Isn't John, isn't John just erring on the side of generosity and I have compassion. one more thing to say because sure. I'm not going to take up any more space. Okay. Are you saying that psychological theory has nothing to teach us about this? Because you're talking around my question. You're gorgeously articulate. You're smarter than me. Does psychology have anything to teach us or not? Yes or no? I don't On think, this question. I don't think that it has anything to teach. I don't think it has anything to offer that I could teach you without let me think so it's that. just too complicated no no it's not no no it's not that well it is that in part because it's not easy to articulate out the principles the unerring principles by which you would make such a categorical judgment right because those are very situation specific problems you know and it's it's part of the problem of how of how to make a um, a generic moral truth applied to a very individualistic situation and the, and the problem in the sorts of situations that you're describing is generally the devil's in the details, right? You have all these students, the ones that you just laid out, they vary in their attitude towards their, their self-professed gender from the ones who are grandstanding to some degree, let's say, to the ones that are very serious. And you have to make a judgment in the moment that is dependent on the variables that present themselves in a very complex way in that situation. And I understand why you you took the pathway that you took, and it's it's perfectly reasonable to do so. My point was that you you don't minimize all the errors by doing so. It's fine. It's, it's still a fine way of approaching. It isn't. My point was that because of my psychological acumen, I would say that, that the experience that I've derived is that I would be comfortable in making the judgment and taking the consequential risk. I'm not saying I'd be correct. 
That's not the same thing at all. I'm willing to suffer the consequences of my error. That's not the same thing as being right. And so if I feel that a student is manipulating me, then I'm not going to go along with it. Now, I might be wrong about that and actually hurt someone who's genuinely asking for something that they need. But I'm also, what would you say, sensitive to the error of allowing manipulation to go unchecked. So everything you're saying is very well put. But it's and I'll see. I think Jordan Peterson has answered all the questions that needed to be answered in this case. I think he has he has explained to you that he doesn't have any particular technique. And he's also explained to you that if there are any principles at all in discerning whether someone is lying or not, it has to be very, very situationally specific. You have to be in that moment to be able to make that call to say, okay, and, and taking so many variables into account to say, okay, is this person actually being truthful or is this person just messing with me is this person genuine in the in their need for wanting to be called in this an unorthodox manner or is this person just joking or playing around with me and he says that based on his psychological training that he can make a reasonable guess and and not that because he's making that guess that he's going to be 100 percent right he's allowing for the possibility that he might be wrong but also that he's allowing for the possibility that but he's also allowing that he's he will take responsibilities for his error that is ready to suffer the consequences of him being wrong so i don't see any reason why john thinks that he hasn't answered this question because he flat out told you that no that he, he didn't have any such technique and if i thought there was such a technique it's not something that can be laid out and be used generically in all cases because situations differ but john is still insistent so let's see what he has to say I can just imagine Jota Pisces is trying to hold back his, you know, hold back his answer. In this case, I don't think he was wrong in his answer to the question. I think John was just fishing for something else. I mean, John obviously had had an opinion of, has an opinion of Jota Peterson, a not so favorable opinion of Jota Peterson, and he just, uh, you know, maybe wanted to take him down. So maybe he thought Jordan is one of those false intellectuals or, or what have you. I don't know how much familiarity John has with the works of Jordan Peterson, but the, the guy is, is pretty solid in some, most, of his, most of the things he says. I mean, in his social commentary and all that, it's, it's pretty good. So I would suggest John look more into him. Probably uh, invite him to his podcast and let him talk about this. If he wants to lay out this question more, let him, let him get... Uh, but, but that's not what he did. He went to Glenn and, and they talk, somewhat talked smack about, about him. I don't think that's very good. Well, so that's my reaction to this piece between Jordan Peterson and um, John McWhorter. I don't think if, if John somehow has it in his head that he won in this interaction, well, I'm sorry to tell you that no, you didn't win because there wasn't really anything to win. He answered your questions perfectly reasonably well but you were just looking for something else and because you didn't get it you concluded that he must be wrong so tell me what you think about this in the comment section below until next time remain awesome